Afternoon. Can I help you? Are you Rose Condor? Um, yes. Who are you? My name's Faye Everett. I'm a journalist with the New York Times. Oh, shit. Um, sorry. It's been so long. My memory's so foggy, but I don't think I can help you, so you can get this. Just give me 30 minutes of your time. It won't take a second more. You know, it'd be a real shame if my friends in New York had to find out where you were. Give me some peace, you witch. Come on. There are countless families and victims who need answers. People deserve the truth, and it's my job to give that to them. Look, I don't know what's been offered for your silence, but just know that your story and yours alone can bring peace of mind to so many people who suffered all those years ago. You're gonna tell your friends about me? If I get enough to make a good story, I have no reason to give up your location. <sighs> Let's talk inside. You can sit over here. I'll go make some coffee. Sounds good. Mind if I record? Ugh, go ahead. You should know something, Miss Everett. Some things are better left buried. And covering the truth won't ease people's fears. It'll just make them worse. I'm not so sure I agree with that. I mean, this guy danced around the police for months. He murdered 13 people and always on schedule. People's minds always think the worst in a case like this, and usually there's nothing worse than what you can imagine. Look, this is a unique case. Fine. You sound pretty sure of yourself. Nonetheless, people need to know the truth, and it's my job to give that to them. <sighs> yeah, I know. I'm trusting you with this information. You better tell it right. That's a job. Right. Um, want some coffee? Yeah, that'd be nice. Tough. I'll be honest, you're being a pain in the ass. Fair enough. Well, let's get on with it. I can't keep running forever. Understandable. Let's get started. Of course. So. You started your theory on cognitive foresight 10 years ago? Mm-hmm, right after I graduated. Can you explain this theory to me? Cognitive foresight is when people use information available to them about people's behavior, daily patterns, to make predictions in their un unconscious mind. This is what used to be referred to as deja vu. Isn't that just a trick of the mind? Yes, that's what it was thought of as for the longest time. How can one feel a sense of experiencing something without actually experiencing it? Makes sense. Because of this superficial explanation, it was never examined further. However, because of the advancement of technology at a convenient time in history, I was able to conduct a research at my university. The reason for this trick is because the human mind is capable of informational foresight. No one just has the mental capacity to form the images beforehand. However, some events are just so likely to happen that we can't help ourselves from thinking about them. How would certain people you know behave in a situation? What circumstances would you be aware of that would affect that situation? Sometimes we do this without even thinking about it, knowing it in our subconscious, in our dreams, and more often than not, we are actually right if we know enough. So it is possible, just no normal person has that mental capacity to really think of those images beforehand normal person, what circumstances make cognitive foresight possible? Well, one would have to have an extremely abnormal brain complex. So it is possible, huh? I think I'm starting to understand why the police hired someone like you to study the body of such a supernaturally cunning killer. Ms. Condor, would you mind explaining what cognitive foresight has to do with the Midnight Massacre? You better listen closely to what I say. 
Everything I'm about to explain plays a part. This killing spree baffled the police for a long time. Trust me, I've never been more invested. There's someone who never got mentioned in the case. They silenced his involvement. They told me to keep quiet. Come on, don't be afraid. No, there's no reason for me to keep being silent now. I've lost everything. They can all go to hell. Damn right. There was a private detective who got hired by the first victim's family. I think, but what must what most people don't know is that we got some outside help from a friend. Oh. That's the first I'm hearing of this. Did you have connections with the local police? No, but they had a key piece of the puzzle to this case, and they gave their life to end it. Enough suspense. Who were they? He was my patient. Back when I started my job as a therapist at Bluebell University, the site of the Midnight Massacres. Who's be Dr. Condor? Yeah. I'm Dr. Caria, the therapist here at Blueville. Not for much longer, though. Thank God. Looking that forward to retirement? Uh, yes, for the last uh, 40 years or so. But uh, looking forward to work? I, yeah, I can barely contain myself. I'm so excited. Glad you're so eager. But before we get going, though, there's a couple things that I'd like to discuss with you in person. Uh, let's take a walk. The, I'll show you around before we head to the office. About the patient. Are they really that troublesome? Just one. Not in a bad way or anything, but the importance of his mental health cannot be understated. I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said his life might depend on it. I don't think I'd be able to sleep at night if I didn't take every precaution possible. Are they suicidal? No. Depression? Not quite. Death in the family. His mother's death, to be exact. His family has a long history of brain cancer and neural dysfunction. My job was to make sure he treated himself right so history didn't repeat itself. Yours is to make sure he keeps up his healthy habits. He needs constant reminding to face the reality of his situation. Poor kid. Yes. What about his personal relationships? He rarely brings up his father, but he talks about his girlfriend an awful lot, Ember Smith. She's a good emotional anchor for him. They've been together for nearly five years. They have arguments from time to time, but that's expected from a young couple tolerating each other for this long. Love is a bitch sometimes. Indeed. So this is your most important patient, Tag Costanzo? He's very adept at avoiding personal topics. He just builds this impenetrable wall anytime I try to get him to open up. He's the only one I haven't been able to get to open up, and I've been with him for five years now, Jesus. He's an adult now, and he's still so impulsive. Maybe you'll have more success where I failed. You do have something that I don't. And what is that? A woman's touch. You've got a nice face. Uh, maybe he'll open up to you. Well, we'll have to see about that. Is there anything you wish you did differently? He can be hot-headed, but the hand he's been dealt is really brutal. I guess after 
years and years of fruitless sessions, I just kind of lost sight of that fact. Maybe it's my age, but anyway, all that's behind me. I'm ready to live out the rest of my days in peace and quiet. They say that Florida's beautiful this time of year. I don't think you want to go to Florida if you want peace and quiet, doctor. About the patient, though, maybe it takes a different tack to get him to open up. Let me know if you do. It'd be a great weight off my decrepit mind. Thank you, doctor. I should start going, though. I have to set up my office. If it smells funny, you're hallucinating. Thanks for the heads up. Oh, one thing. Uh, before you came here, you said that you were conducting research. What made you want to become a therapist? Well, I wrote two research papers. Neither of them were received well. Both of my areas of study are in the medical field, but I thought coming here, working with the students, it could be a new direction. Help me with my research. All right. Well, best of luck. Thank you. You too, doctor. Enjoy the crocs and the hurricanes in Florida. <laughs> I most certainly will. Both of their deaths are too similar to be coincidences. That bizarre murder last week was already a huge shit show, and now we could be dealing with something a lot worse. Shit. I'm only a few months away from pension, too. I guess I'm dealing with a deranged killer. This just got much more interesting. I do hope you're enjoying yourself, Detective. That's all theoretical. Besides, that joy won't last forever if we can't catch this person before word picks up about what they're doing. It won't be long. They've given us a pattern. Forensics determined both of their deaths to have happened around midnight, the second killing being exactly a week from the first. Could be a coincidence. Maybe they're just trying to mislead us. <sighs> it's okay to admit you're wrong, you know. Fine. They follow a pattern and you win. A twisted sense of style and a crazy bloodlust? Checks all the boxes of a serial killer to me. We should make the public aware of this situation. I can't. What? Our chief doesn't want us to cause a panic, okay? It's fine. We can handle this quickly and quietly. We just can't let this leak. You're right. At least we know who they're going after. This is the best course of action. For the people at risk, or for you? Cut that attitude right now. All right. If you don't want to take the heat, I'll do it myself. You're not ready for this. Excuse me? I've got higher priorities here than covering my own ass. Watch it. Off the ideals and an attitude like that won't get you far, detective. Excuse me, but I don't really give a shit. Ugh, fine, fine. I'll share what we have tomorrow over the phone. Thanks. Oh, one more thing. What? Anywhere I should start? It's two in the morning. I'm just getting started. <sighs> we do have a lead. It's a pretty shitty lead, but it's something. There is one thing you could do to get started. We'll explain the rest tomorrow. Now get out of here. You're an inconvenience to my mental health. Thank you. Hey, Eve, make sure you watch your back, or you'll get a bullet in it. I think the killer uses knives, officer. Get out, smartass. And good luck. Thanks, but I'm good. I've never failed to solve a case yet. I'll catch them.